Now, let's talk about the core subject of today's video, going all, if I was forced to go all in one stock for the next one, three, five years, what stock would I pick, right? First, I think I need to give this disclaimer out there, never going all in one stock, you gotta be flipping my flapjacks, okay? I mean, if I was forced to really do this, I'd have to put it in the S&P 500 or something like that, right? Obviously, we're playing an individual stock game today, we're gonna have some fun with this, but I mean, if you force me, I would have to go S&P 500, right? But um, overall, it's very dangerous to go on all in one stock. And so I think everybody needs to understand that before we get into this. Even if you get that stock right, you try to do it again. Next thing you know, that one doesn't work out, right? So looking at the public count here, right? The, the way I want to start this game is there's certain positions that are easy eliminations. Like they're not going to be in factoring going all in for one year, three year, or five year in this exercise, right? So what are the ones I would easily eliminate that just couldn't even be part of this, okay? Revolve, I would eliminate. You know, I, that one just can't be in there. It's not a stock I could feel comfortable being all in. Fubo, same exact thing. I mean, yeah, it's got huge upside, but I just, I couldn't even feel comfortable being all in Fubo for a day. Never mind, uh, <laughs> never mind a year or three years or five years, no way, okay? SoFi, same exact situation. Planet, same exact situation. Chipotle, Toll Brothers, uh, no, <laughs> okay? I mean, maybe it could make some handsome money there if the market goes down substantially over the next year or two, but still, no, okay? I'm not risking everything on, on those, right? So those are the for sure no's. So from there, Let's talk one year, okay? So if I had to eliminate from there for one year, I would eliminate Tesla first off. You know, Tesla, I think margins are going to go back up in the back half of the year, and I think that's going to be very bullish for the stock, right? But I think there's probably going to still be this overwhelming perspective probably from the market over this next year of worrying about like demand essentially oh tesla's got no demand and so even if their margins come back in the back half of the year like i think they're going to come back there'll still be like um you know like oh tesla can't grow blah 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 they're, like that's going to be kind of this, a lot of the sentiment i still think for a lot of this year right elf on a shelf the, the thing that worries me about a uh, one year on elf is if they just report one quarter that the numbers weren't quite there the stock could get crushed epically like i'm talking 20 30 percent quick 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 if they missed any sort of numbers over this year because it's trading at a very high valuation right cheesecake factory you know i think they're gonna have a good year but at the same time you know i don't know is everything magically changed in regards to cake in regards to how people view that stock on wall street i'm not sure about that nike although i'm very confident in nike's 2025 and beyond numbers this year is kind of setting up for, you know, a set, you know, Nike's basically positioning themselves for 2025 and 2026 and beyond. So that doesn't make Nike as exciting of an opportunity for a lot of Wall Street this year, right? So those would be kind of the ones I would eliminate from there, okay? So that leaves us with NVIDIA, Palantir, Amazon, PayPal, and Meta. So now I need to eliminate three more, and then we'll see which one wins. I would eliminate Meta. Meta, I mean, there's a lot of negativity around big tech right now with some of the government stuff that's going on right now and you know the eu is now looking in the big tech companies and trying to crack down so that's going to probably be something that weighs on the big tech for a little bit here in the short term right paypal uh and by the way and also apple's one of the biggest big techs out there uh usually number two and apple i mean from what i just heard 30 percent plus units down in china i mean gosh it could be a you know, Apple could definitely work against the market in the queues in the short term here, right? So that could pull back on a meta. PayPal, you know, I'm pretty confident in this next year in PayPal. But with that being said, you know, it doesn't quite beat out these other stocks. Amazon, pretty confident in this one over this year. I think AWS growth is going to accelerate. I think e-commerce is going to be strong. I think advertising is going to be strong. But with that being said, the two strongest ones for the next year is Palantir and NVIDIA, right? Both those are great companies, profitable, great balance sheets. So if I had to say which one would be the best for the next year, that stock would be NVIDIA. NVIDIA would be the winner, winner, chicken dinner. It is a hard pick between Palantir and NVIDIA. I think both set up tremendous. I think Palantir could put up a phenomenal year this year in terms of AIP growth and what that does to their commercial business, specifically in the U.S., with that being said, Europe has been very slow adopting anything AI related, so that could weigh on the business. Government contracts, you know, are up and down. So it looks like government contracts are starting to go in the right direction in regards to Palantir, but that could obviously change. But uh, NVIDIA, NVIDIA is just the easiest setup. I mean, you got the valuations pretty attractive forward PE wise, 
And I just know they're going to put up great numbers quarter in and quarter out for this company. I'd be shocked, shocked if they don't just continue to put up epic numbers quarter in and quarter out. When you think about the chips that are coming in the back half of the year, when you think about the software opportunity for this company, I think they sell up pretty, pretty darn well. So yeah, if I just had to say one year, I would go NVIDIA. All right, so let's go three years, okay? Now, three years, I got to factor in a few things. I think there's a decent probability of an unemployment-related recession at some point in the next three years. I also think there's a decent probability we could have a second package of inflation in the next three years, which puts a whole different type of risk in the market, right? And I also think there's a potential of a strong economy where, where real wages tick up substantially over the next few years, right? So I got to factor in all three of those different scenarios into this kind of three-year thought process here. So for three year, I would eliminate Meta from this one. I would eliminate Elf on a Shelf from this one as well. Just, you know, what if they had a bad number over the next year or something like that? Or what if next year's Elf numbers were not quite there? What would that mean for the stock price of Elf, right? Uh, Amazon, I would take that one out. Palantir as well. You know, what if what if Palantir, what if this AIP excitement, AI excitement, what if that did die down over this next you know, let's say next year or something like that. Or what if the recession hits and then companies see a company like Palantir and they're like, man, your software looks great, but right now we just don't have the budget for it. And Palantir is like, hey man, we're going to save you a certain amount of money. But if people are in scarcity mentality, they just don't want to spend on anything. And so what if that was just to happen, right? That could obviously hurt a company like Palantir quite a bit in the short term if you had some sort of recessionary scenario play out, right? Uh, Cake, I would eliminate them. I would eliminate Nike and I would eliminate NVIDIA because I think there's a decent probability NVIDIA will have that day of reckoning at some point in this next three years. Probably not this year, maybe not even next year, but at some point the growth rate will slow substantially and everybody's going to freak out in regards to NVIDIA. And that will be the moment when NVIDIA stock will actually go down. The bears have wanted to go down last year. They want to go down this year. They might be waiting a bit, okay? You know, NVIDIA will have that day of reckoning, but it might be a bit of time. You know, you might have to wait a bit here. Maybe it's in, in a recession, right? And let's say companies like Meta, Google, Microsoft, and others, let's say recession hits, the revenues downtrend, something like that, and all of a sudden they're not placing as many orders for NVIDIA, right? And maybe the market gets more competitive by that particular time. You know, you can play all those sorts of things out in that story, right? So that leaves us with PayPal and Tesla as my favorite stocks for the next three years specifically, right? Well, from there, I would have to eliminate PayPal because I think Tesla's next three years is too exciting. And I mean, it's a winner, winner, chicken dinner because at the end of the day, We've got a company here where Cybertruck is going to fully ramp over this next year, right? And that has demand, unlimited demand forever. Um, I don't want to say forever, but for many years, right? Model 2 will be in the market at some point in time during that three-year span. It's just a question of a year from now, two years from now, or is it more toward the three-year mark, right? And I'm 100% convinced that FSD will be 100% solved within the next three years, probably in the next 12 to 18 months. The progress I'm seeing from Tesla now at this point in time is insane. So the moral of the story is, I would say Tesla probably sets up the best for the next three years specifically. It has a lot of things going for it. And as margins come back, right, what like I think they are over the, over the back half of the year and then into future years, I think that's going to be big, big, big for Tesla. So they're the winner, winner, chicken dinner for three years. What about five years? Okay. All right. Let's play this game. Okay. Now, this is where it gets really hard. I was going to be honest. This was the hardest one for me. Trying to the, the easiest one was one year. That was the easiest one for me to figure out. Three year, I thought that was a little bit difficult. Uh, five year was brutal. I mean, this is where the majority of my time went because you got to understand as a long-term investor, I'm always thinking you know, three to seven years out. But ideally, I'm thinking five years out in regards to company. That's what I can realistically see. But the problem is every stock I hold I think it's going to be great over the next five years, right? And so this is where it's like absolutely brutal because there's some stocks that I th- hold sometimes. I'm like, ooh, I don't really like the setup for the next year. It's more of a buying opportunity in that stock. That's, that's, that's easier. But five years? I like everything. Are you kidding me? So this one got hard. So the ones I would have to eliminate for this one would be Amazon. I would have to eliminate Cheesecake for this one. And I would have to eliminate Nike. And once again, I love all three of those stocks for the next five years. I think they're going to perform phenomenal. But if you're forcing me, those would be the three I would have to eliminate right off the bat. From there, what am I doing? Like I said, this is brutal. From there, 
I would have to eliminate meta, believe it or not. Yes, meta. I would have to eliminate that because what if Apple was to put on some more changes that hurt meta? I have to think about that over the next five years, right? The problem is Apple holds holds so much weight still in regards to because, you know, how are all these people using meta, right? How are all these people using Facebook, Threads, Instagram, WhatsApp, a lot of them are using it through iOS or they're using it through Android. And the other threat is what if Google did something to hurt Meta, right? Change something in their app store policies that, you know, really hurt Meta's business model or something like that. It's something I got to consider there. So I would have to eliminate that one plus this government scrutiny on all these big techs as well. I would have to eliminate PayPal, although I really like PayPal setup. That's another one that, well, what if I'm wrong in regards to payments going through PayPal, Venmo? What if, you know, everybody's just using Apple Pay and Google Pay? And, you know, I don't know, like the bear case comes true in regards to PayPal, right? Palantir, I'd have to eliminate that one. What if AIP hype dies down, AI hype and excitement dies down? People aren't interested in that in the next five years. I don't think that's very realistic, but Let's play it as a game, right? And then NVIDIA, I would have to eliminate them as well, which is very tough. So I, that would leave me Tesla and ELF, right? And it's more just kind of the belief in Tesla and ELF over the next five years versus, you know, some of these other stocks, right? So who's the winner, winner, chicken dinner, and why are they the chicken dinner here, okay? <sighs> this is brutal. Elf on a Shelf, believe it or not, won the battle. It won the war. It won the war. I'm shocked, honestly. When I really played this game out, I was shocked to see Elf win the war in the end. Yes, it even beat out good old Tesla Mayasa. And the reason it did, okay, is a few reasons, but the, the main reason it did is Elf's the most consistent great company in the market. It's the best. It's better than NVIDIA. It's better than AMD. It's better than Tesla. It's better than Meta. It's just better for the last five years. There's no company that has been putting up this sort of growth quarter and quarter out. You know, NVIDIA can go through ups and downs. I mean, NVIDIA's business model a year and a half ago, people thought was in a horrible place. 18 months ago, 16 months ago, AMD, same exact thing, right? Those businesses can be up and down. Tesla, everybody's been bearish on Tesla for the last, you know, uh, at least year and a half now at this point in time, right? If not two years, been bearish on Tesla. So we know Tesla goes through ups and downs. Meta, I mean, somebody sold me Meta shares, $88.94 back in, what, was that November of 2022? So those businesses go through these kind of ups and downs. Things are looking great. Things are looking horrible. And then you got Elf with 3%, 7%, 11%, 8%, 16%, 8%, 7%, 10%, 30, 24%, 50% growth. I mean, they just put up these insane numbers. And when I look at this company, I mean, they talk about one out of one out of five companies out of 274 with 20 quarters of a uh, 20% growth, right? You know, I was looking at this most recently. This was on their Instagram yesterday, and uh, they had this new launch with uh, Liquid Death, completely random. And you know, it was just kind of insane. It's the type of stuff that goes viral. And you know, I'm looking at the comments under the video. How is it sold out in 25 minutes? They sold out of everything they had in 25 minutes. This person says sold out already. This person says, how did it sell out so fast? Please restock. This person says, sold out when it was in my cart. This person says, $34? Dang, what happened to being affordable? I looked at that comment and I said, uh-oh, here's the deal, okay? Just when you think Elf's margins can't get any better. The thing is, Elf's products are usually so flip and flapjack and affordable that they have room to move up price quite a bit over this next few years if they want to choose to do so, okay? And so that's just a little food for thought in regards to that. Like, you know, people think Elf's margins can't go any further. And I'm looking at them and I'm like, you guys realize how, how affordable these products are that they could easily move up the price 50 cents here, dollar here, $2 here. And what that does for the company's margins is like a night and day difference. What it does for the company's bottom line is like a night and day difference. I mean, it's insane. If you talk about Elf was to move every product up $1, which I honestly, my personal opinion, I, don't, I think they could do it. And I don't think they would sell any less. But if they did that, do you know what that extra dollar per item would do to their bottom line? Oh my gosh, okay. Please do another drop. It's sold out. When's the restock, right? That's Elf. I mean, it's just insane. This is just a company on a different level. 
executing better than anybody else is executing. They just are. I don't know the other way to put it. They're a one-on-one. That's the best way I put it. They're a one-on-one. And who's going to stop them over this next five years, right? The, the good news for Elf is they don't, they don't have to deal with and by the way, they got world domination coming. They're just they're just starting to expand internationally. And because their products go so viral on TikTok, Instagram, like the market's already there for them. Wherever they want to go, they want to expand into Europe huge over this next, we can call it, uh, you know, three years, five years. It's cake for them. It's easy for them. Uh, there's already a huge customer base there. It's not like there's some new brand, like, oh, no one's ever heard of us. We got to try to build up clientele over the next 10 years. No, people already are want Elf's products in Europe. They already want Elf's products in France and in England and in India. They already want in China. They already want Elf's products all over the world because of going viral all over social media all, over, all, all the time, right? And so that's just a little food for thought in regards to that. And they don't really have any gatekeepers. You know, like, like Meta, I talked about Meta earlier. They have gatekeepers they have to deal with, right? Uh, Google and Apple, they are the gatekeepers, iOS and Android. And so if, you know, if they did something negative, it could definitely affect a company like Meta. It has before, right? Tesla has to deal with interest rates in, in the economy, right? It has to, do with, to deal with two sides. If the economy was to tank, that wouldn't be great for, for Tesla, right? If interest rates were stayed very elevated, that's not great for Tesla. So they have to deal with that, right? Uh, companies like NVIDIA and Palantir love them so much, but they, they, you know, at some point, maybe AI starts to die down a bit a year from now, two years from now, right? And, you know, these things go through waves, just like EVs, right? Everybody in the grandma seemed like it was going to get an EV, and then EV demand slowed way down, right? I think the long-term trend is very clear, but in the short term, it slowed down. Same thing could happen to an NVIDIA or a Palantir a year from now, two years from now. Where it's like their demand's crazy in 2024, maybe it leads into 2025, and then all of a sudden, at some point in 2025, all of a sudden, numbers start to slow a bit, and people are like, whoa, what, what's going on here, right? And then you're in that, that period of trying to figure out, is this disbelief, or are we, is this real, like, what's going on here, right? And so, you know, Amazon, consistent, great company. But we've actually seen the deceleration massively of AWS, so, you know, this is like, uh, it's kind of like picking who's the best quarterback, or who's the best uh player at a, at a sport where you're, you're looking at it and you're like, you, you know, you're trying to nitpick these things. But at the end of the day, it actually came back to Elf being the most confident in that one. And in a recession, Elf is going to do just amazing because their products are so affordable and people are still going to buy makeup in a recession. It doesn't matter. High inflation, Elf dealt with high inflation as good of it as any company in the world. I mean, it was unbelievable the way they dealt with inflation, right? And so a strong economy, they're going to be just fine in that as well. That just gives them more leverage to, if they want to up price 50 cents, dollar, $2 an item here and there, they can do that. And what that will do, their bottom line, they'll eat up that, that forward P. People look at Elf right now and they're like, wow, high forward P. They can eat that up very, very quickly. If they go up on their products just a little bit, just a little bit, what that will do, that bottom line and their profitability will explode. And so, anyways, it was hard decisions. I like all my stocks for the next five years. But, yeah, I, I was shocked when I went through that exercise as well because I hadn't really done that in a while. And I did that exercise, and I was like, dang, Elf actually won. Who would have thought it, man? This bull market is not over, says the professor, Jeremy Siegel. Uh, of business and uh, chief economist at Wisdom Tree. Very good to see you, professor, as always. Long time no speak. I, I just wonder whether you see a little bit of a close today. It's only one day's close, of course. And you think, yeah, that, that makes sense because we're on track, whether we look at it 10% up year to date on the S&P 500 or but one statistic that j jumps out to me, we're on track for five months in a row of gains. Are we due a little bit of a pullback? Well, I wouldn't be surprised, although I, I still think the momentum is there, Will. I, I, I still think this bull move is strong and has a ways to go. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you could have a little corrections under the way, kind of head fakes. But, uh, you know, I, I think uh, I think the news is strong. I, I think the inflation is going to be uh, being reduced. Uh, I saw a GDP estimate uh, by uh, the Atlantic Fed just came out after the durable goods at 2.1 percent, exactly the target of the Fed this year. Um, so the economy is not showing signs of weakness. And surprisingly, a uh, 12-month earnings forward, instead of usually they, they, they go down as the year goes uh, on, 
because they're often overestimistic, are actually rising in many circumstances. So I still think, yes, we could have a two, even a 5% reaction, but I don't think this, uh, this bull market is over. Well, well, let's talk about inflation and what, of course, that then feeds back into rates in the market, because obviously we get PCE on Friday when the market will be closed. Well, earlier today on Squawk on the, sheet, uh, sh- uh, Squawk on the Street, excuse me, it's been a long day, uh, Professor Siegel, I was talking to James Gorman. Let's hear his take on rates. I would be surprised if they move in the first half of this year. I would not be totally shocked if they don't do anything for the rest of the year. Professor Siegel, no rate cuts at all this year. Do you think that's possible? What would it do to markets? It is possible. Uh, I mean, Torsten Slack. <laughs> oh, man. I love this. It's like everything I, I talk about and predict, they end up talking about it later on. I was talking about there might be no rate cuts at all this year, way before anybody was even mentioning this. Like, And now all of a sudden, this guy's got the opinion. Jeremy Siegel's like, well, it's a possibility, right? With that being said, you know, it's still very possible they'll, they'll lower rates a couple times in the back half of the year. But it's just funny that everybody's coming to this epiphany of like, wow, maybe, 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 just maybe they don't cut this The economist who came out with that a couple weeks ago, and uh, I, I think it's unlikely. I, I think it's against the odds. But very honestly, what's more important for the market is the state of the economy and earnings going forward to whether the Fed lowers it in June, Ju- July, or even December. And the scary part is the the longer the Fed stays elevated with rates, the, the more of a risk it has to the overall economy, really substantially hurting it and having a big unemployment recession at some point in time down the road within the next, you know, we can call it one to two years. Uh, as the case may be. Now, I still think the odds are definitely that they're going to lower it, but I think people are beginning to realize that uh, they're going to be buying stocks for earnings more than what the timing of the Fed rate cuts are is actually uh, going to be. So if, if we step back, whether it's in, in the short term and the S&P's up 10% this year, despite uh, rate cut expectations coming down significantly, or, or longer term since the sort of October uh, 22 lows, do rates not really matter and uh, uh, multiples for stocks will kind of ignore rates altogether? No, multiples, they, they matter. Uh, I think we're looking at 21 times forward earnings uh, on the S&P. Now, you know, that is slightly rich. I've often argued that t- about 20, I thought, is the equilibrium. Uh, now, of course, if you take out the, the MAG-7, you're down to about a 17 and 18, which is, you know, more reasonable. Uh, you know, I, I still think we have a bifurcated market uh, here. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad because... Those stocks have generated the bulk of the growth of the earnings. Um, but when I look overall at the market, I say, no, it's not cheap, but it certainly is, is, is not something that I think any long-term investor should avoid. And particularly even an intermediate-term investor, I think, is going to be rewarded. I wanted to get your take on gold, which... If- so I have spoke extensively recently about, and I don't really need to hear opinion on gold. Um, I, I've spoken extensively recently on the main channel, really the last two videos, specifically in regards to the market, where we're trading it, what makes sense to buy, doesn't make, it make sense to buy, um, why I'm doing certain things in the market and whatnot. So if you don't follow me on my main channel, it's called Financial Education. I'm sure most of you guys do, but if you don't, it's called Financial Education. And those two videos go extensively into that whole subject, looking at valuations, looking at all the data, looking at all the inflation numbers, what's going on with that, okay?